When wintertime brings sub-freezing temperatures, many riders opt to winterize the bike and let it have a nice cozy nap until springtime arrives. But many folks just ride throughout the winter months. So if you're considering extending your riding season throughout the winter, here are some tips to help you do it safely and comfortably. For cold weather riding, first you want to make sure that your bike is ready. And that starts with your oil. When starting your engine, your oil needs to flow to all the internal parts of the engine to start providing lubrication as quickly as possible. So check your owner's manual to see what viscosity of oil is recommended for your bike for different temperature ranges. The next thing you want to check on your bike is going to be your tire pressures. As the temperature drops, air naturally condenses, and that's going to cause the pressure in your tires to drop as well. So just make sure that you are checking your tire pressures regularly and adjusting them as needed to stay at the factory specs as the temperature changes. And the next thing to look at on your bike is how well equipped is your bike for cold weather riding. Touring bikes tend to be the best equipped from the factory with their large windscreens, fairings, and sometimes even including heated grips or a heated seat. But regardless of what type of bike that you have that you want to ride in the wintertime, usually you can swap to a larger windscreen if you like. You can add wind deflectors in front of your hand grips to keep the winds off of your hands. Or you can opt for insulated windproof covers like these hippo hands. And you might even want to consider adding heated grips if your bike doesn't have them already. Next, we need to make sure that you are ready to brave the cold temperatures by having the right gear. I always start with snug fitting synthetic base layers, top and bottom, and usually a pair of wool socks on as well. Over that, I'll just wear normal lightweight clothing underneath my riding gear. My riding pants have a waterproof liner that do a really good job of blocking the wind. But if you want even better insulation from the elements, you may wish to try a one-piece suit like this AeroStitch Roadcrafter. Now, I do not recommend wearing just jeans in colder temperatures. I don't recommend wearing just jeans in any temperatures, but that's another conversation. Uh, but in colder temperatures specifically, we're looking for something that's going to do a good job of blocking the wind off of us as we ride. So some good leather chaps or motorcycle pants that have windproof, waterproof liners. Next, I have a heated jacket. And this is the main reason that I just wear thin layers underneath my riding gear, because if I had bulky layers and then I put my heated jacket on, I'm not going to feel the heat as effectively. Plus, the heated jacket in general is just going to be more effective on a motorcycle compared to trying to insulate with bulky layers. One, the heated jacket is going to do a much better job of keeping you warm. Uh, and two, by not having heavy bulky layers, uh, it's easier for you to maintain freedom of movement on the motorcycle. And next, before I put my riding jacket on, I put on my neck scarf. Now, uh, whether you have a neck scarf or a full balaclava that covers the top of your head, you want something that can cover all around the neck and ideally at least the bottom of your face, okay? Uh, with one that goes all the way around your head, that's gonna do a better job of keeping you warm. You just wanna make sure that it's not so bulky that it's gonna make your helmet fit extra snug. And if you get one that comes up and covers your face, that helps to protect the wind from whipping underneath the chin bar of your helmet, right? Now, a lot of helmets have chin curtains to help prevent that as well, but this will also help. Now, the reason covering your neck is so important, right? Because you're gonna get some wind coming at you from the front, but more so, you're going to be getting wind going around the back. And that's because as you're riding, right, you have your windscreen, you're wearing your helmet, but you have a low pressure area behind you. And the wind, the air is going to go around your helmet and be drawn to that low pressure area, causing the back of the neck to get pretty chilly, right? 
So you want something that's going to cover that. Right. So I'm going to keep mine pulled down here a little bit so that you can hear me, still hear me talk. Next is my riding jacket, which is very similar to the pants that I wear in that it's a mesh outer jacket with a waterproof, windproof liner. And next is the helmet. And the best thing you can do to make your helmet more effective in cold weather is to get one that either has or has the ability to add a pin lock insert to your face shield. Usually when we ride in cold temperatures, fogging up the inside of the face shield becomes an issue because the warm breath that you're exhaling comes into contact with this cold face shield and it causes it to condense and fog up. Pinlock inserts avoid that by giving you an additional layer on the inside of your face shield that's separated from the face shield itself. Acts very similar to a double pane insulated window in your house. So now as you exhale, the warm breath is coming into contact with the pinlock insert and not the actual face shield itself, which is exposed to the cold outside temperatures. My last bit of kit to add are my heated gloves. And similar with the heated jacket, right? My heated gloves are a little bit thinner, not quite as bulky as some heavy insulated winter riding gloves. I'm all bundled up. Now I'm ready to take the bike out, plug my heated gear in and hit the road. Now, once we're out and on the bike, there's a few things we want to keep in mind. First, be aware that your tires being cold are not going to have very good grip. So take it easy to start with. Go easy on your acceleration, braking, and cornering until you have time to build up a little bit of heat in the rubber. But be aware that you're only going to get your tires to warm up so much because as you're riding along the sub-freezing blacktop, it's going to continuously suck that heat right back out of them which means you're going to want to dial back your quartering speeds a little bit because you're not going to have the same level of grip as you would on a warm sunny day. Next, you're going to want to make sure you keep an eye out for any ice. If you've had any recent rains or snow that could be running off, be especially vigilant. Even if it just looks wet, it still could be frozen ice underneath of it that's melting. And if you come across a patch that you can't avoid, you want to slow down as much as you can prior to getting to the icy surface and then coast straight across with no lean angle. Another roadway hazard to be aware of in the wintertime is going to be any cinders or gravel that's left over if they use that to treat snow-covered roads in your area. So always make sure that you are scanning ahead, looking out for stuff like that. And when you see it, avoid if possible. If not, just slow down prior to reaching that surface and minimize any lean angle or abrupt throttle or brake applications. Now, if the road crews use salt to treat the roads in the wintertime where you ride, I would recommend washing your bike off throughout the winter season. Now, I'm not saying you gotta break out the detail supplies and get it all prettied up for a bike show, but you definitely want to take a hose and spray off all the salt and grime that you've picked up so that it doesn't sit on your bike and cause any corrosion throughout the winter. And my final tip is probably the most important and that is to be aware of your own body's limitations and condition. If at any point during your ride you're starting to feel cold to the point that it's affecting your ability to safely operate the motorcycle, such as you feel like you can't move your fingers as quickly as you normally would, 
uh, or same thing with your feet, right? If you can't operate any of the controls with the same speed and precision as you usually would be able to. And especially if you start to feel any numbness, right, in your fingers or any parts of your body, then that's a really good sign that it's time to find a spot to take a break, right? Warm up with a cup of coffee and maybe even consider calling it a day. Riding a motorcycle is risky enough. You don't want to increase that risk by pushing yourself beyond what you're capable of. So riding in the winter time can be enjoyable. You just gotta make sure that your bike is ready, that you are ready, and that you are aware of the limitations in, especially in traction, that come with riding in the winter time. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my ride today as the snow flurries are coming down around me. As always, thanks for watching and ride safe.